Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of The Daily Stuff. We are really excited to have you here, and we do hope that you will welcome from whatever you watch us in the world. So today we are dealing with a very spicy topic that our prophet will be elaborating on. Kip, do you want to tell us more? Well, today we're dealing with none other than the art of seduction. Well, this is a bit of a controversial topic, but... Uh, our Father, our Father in the Lord, Prophet Ethan Branson, today is going to explain and elaborate more upon this topic that us as Christians, we tend to ignore. Yeah, so we do hope that your hearts are cultivated and the word that is a seed will fall on good ground. So stay tuned from us and step back from our prophet's death and Praise the Lord, we are back right now, and it was just a wonderful, wonderful introduction. It was amazing. So wherever you are watching us from, in any part of the world you are watching us from right now, please tell a friend to tell a friend that we are live. So tell a friend to tell a friend that we are live, and let us just increase our audience. So make sure that you share this broadcast with somebody. Let them know we are live. You don't want to miss this. It's called the Art or seduction. You want to actually pull your whole attention span and focus on this one so that you can be able to grasp that which God wants you to understand, that which God wants you to learn today. Hallelujah. Amen. So I can't wait to get into this one. I believe you are ready. Get your notebooks, get your pen, get your Bible, get everything that you're dealing with and let us very well get into this particular topic so that you can be in a place where you understand what God definitely wants for you today. Hallelujah. So I believe you've got your Bibles ready like I do have mine. Make sure that you get your Bibles ready. Let your neighbor also get your Bibles ready. Get everything ready. Your notebook. Get it writing. Get, get your writing gear on so that we can start right now and have this one. Hallelujah. I believe you're ready. I don't know about you, but I believe we are ready. And I believe we are ready to go. And we are about to definitely do something amazing. The art of seduction. What is the art of seduction? Is seduction a bad thing or a good thing? We are about to find out right now. So make sure that you're grabbing your Bibles, your notebook, and get ready to run. On that very same note, we are on it immediately. Genesis chapter number 3. So, Genesis chapter number 3. I'm going to give you a bit of time. You just get the book of Genesis chapter number three. And if you are still wondering where Genesis is, it's actually the last chapter of the Bible when you turn your Bible upside down. Genesis chapter number three. And I can I just have somebody to read for us Genesis chapter number three as we deal with this one? Genesis chapter number three. Somebody please read for us. Genesis chapter number three and verse number one. Genesis three and verse number one. Let's read it. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field, uh -huh. which, the Lord God had made. which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, And he said unto the woman, Yeah, that God said you shall not eat of any tree of the garden. Yeah. Did God really say you should not eat of any tree that's in the midst of the garden? Uh -huh. And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the tree of the garden. 
And the woman said, we may freely eat to all the trees in the garden. Uh-huh. And of the fruit of the tree, which is in the midst of the garden. But of the fruit of the tree, which is in the midst of the garden. God has said. God has already commanded. You shall not eat of it. Uh-huh. Neither shall you touch it. You shall not eat of it, neither shall you touch it. Yes, you die. Lest you... Now, I want you to get something right here. Already, they are already establishing something. Genesis from chapter number one. God has made everything beautiful. Everything is good. Everything is devotious. It's looking amazing. It's all good. And the serpent is not in the picture at this particular time. Genesis chapter number two as well. God alludes the creation of man. How man was formed rather. How God formed man out of the dust of the ground and breathed into him the breath of life. The word breathe days, the word shall pack. That means he installed his spirit into the human body and the human body became a living soul. Now, Genesis chapter number three right now, after God gave men the commandments, that of every tree in the garden you may freely eat, but of the tree of knowledge of good and of evil thou shalt not eat. For in the day that thou shalt eat, you shall surely die. Genesis chapter 3 opens and says, Now the serpent was more subtle. The word subtle there is the very same word that says coming. Understand? Notorious. In a very, very bad way. Another, in other words, bad knowledge, bad insight, bad wisdom. But the serpent was very, very cunning, very subtle than all the beasts that the Lord God had made. And he said to the woman, in other words, the serpent looked at the woman and already from the first part there, you were already introduced to seduction. Now, I want you to understand this, that seduction from the English Dictionary, the word seduction simply means this. It simply means to a form of enticing or luring somebody into an in, uh, uh, into an inadvisable notion or a foolish hard thing to do. So when you are seducing somebody, you are actually hacking into their willpower to make them do something that they will not utterly do with themselves in their own conscience. So basically, that's what we call human spirit hacking. So if I seduce you, I want to cause you to do something. I hack into your willpower to cause you to do something that you may not be able to do in your own right consciousness. Are you getting this part? So when you are seducing somebody, you are basically committing them, causing them to do something inadvisable for them to do. That is basically seduction. So if we definitely seduce an individual, which means we are causing you to do something that you will not utterly do in your own senses. I hope you're getting this so far. Now, the serpent gets in this particular way and says to the woman, did really the Lord say? Understand this. The first part of seducing is actually to lure somebody into doing something. Like uh, back in the days when we were still growing up and we were young, under the African sun, what we definitely do is this. When we wanted to catch birds for, for the sake of meat, we did not have all these KFCs and uh, McDonald's where you can actually go, go get your fast foods. You had to hunt your meat and uh, you had to let the prey into a trap by giving them what they want. So what we'll definitely do in order to catch the, catch the chickens or the birds would put seedlets on the ground. So the chicken eats the seed following the seeds but does not know that the intention of the seeds which are just lying around at no trap are actually blurring the prey into a trap. That was the art of seduction. So basically when you are seducing an individual, you let them into a trap. And how do you let them? There are different ways of seduction. This is what we're going to get into right now. The art is called an art, right? The craft of seducing. So there is a particular ultimate goal that you already have, that you say, this is the mission, this is the outstatement, this is the destination where I want this particular person to get into. And before this particular person get into that particular scenery or that particular place of being seduced, there are steps, that craftness that is basically done in order to achieve the purpose of seducing that individual. 
I hope you're getting this. So right now, we are about to get into the art themselves. What are these arts? What, what really happens when you, you have to be seductive? What causes a person to really get into a state where we now call you a seducer or a seducee? Mm -hmm. I hope you're not getting this part. Now, I want you to understand this part. Remember, we notified and we actually came up with a notion that the word seduce, according to the Oxford Dictionary, simply means an act of enticing somebody into doing something inadvisable or foolishly. I hope you're now getting this. So, if the scripture tells us that the devil was more cunning, was more subtle than any other beast, in other words, it was a subtle mind that had to be in play in order to achieve the art of seduction, in order to achieve the final goal of seducing Eve. Now, here is a beautiful tree, the knowledge of good and evil, the tree of knowledge of good and evil. It's seen in the mist each and every single time they wake up. There are other trees all over that are bearing fruits, but there's this particular tree that's in the midst of the garden. They see it every day. They see its fruits, but there is a wandering spirit within. You understand? This part of uh, questioning, what does this fruit taste like? How does it look like? And let me tell you this, the eyes of their understanding pertaining such a tree was not yet opened until the serpent came with an art of seduction. Now the art that he used there is called the luring art. The first part of seduction is to lure somebody. In other words, is to cause them to hack into their mind, to cause them to see what their human mind could not see, to cause them to have a consciousness beyond their normal conscious that they were able to be conscious in. And that's what the enemy did. The first thing that he did is to give a question. Did the Lord God say you should not eat? And have you realized that this is basically, this is basically how we get into sin? That the enemy gives us a question. Is really sex before marriage bad? You are questioned on that willpower. You are questioned on the word that you've already received in your spirit. That very same word that has entered your spirit, that spirit man that has received and conceived the word, you are questioned on that. Are you sure? Was that really his intention? Is that what he really said? Is that what he really meant? That he should not eat? Maybe he meant something better. Maybe he meant something different. Did he really say you should not eat of the fruit of the tree? Maybe he meant something beyond what we're thinking. And that's the same thing that the enemy asked. Did the Lord say you should not eat of this fruit that you can see falling every day? You are pruning the tree. You are cleaning the tree. But you have no idea how it tastes like. Oh. And I believe this is the very same confession of a lot of people who saying, I went to school with this girl. She would tell me I need help with my homeworks. But there was a day I looked at her and my heart pumped faster. My blood and blood rushes. And I asked myself, is this girl really having intentions of being my friend? Or she just wants to be gotten into a place where she's cornered into a relationship. And after that relationship, we corner her very well into the bedroom. And one thing leads to another, and then voila, we are done with the mission. Until that consciousness is seared, until that conscious feeling, that conscious boundary is broken, then that art can't work. So the enemy makes sure that he questions the word that you have within you. Are you getting this part? To such an extent that there are a lot of people right now who are still questioning, am I really called in ministering? Am I really called to serve God? Maybe this is for others, but yet the Bible says for many are called. In other words, majority of us, we are called by God. So the question is, am I called or not? Many are called, but few are chosen. So if, if you're listening to the sound of my voice right now, you are part of the called. The question is, are you part of the chosen? So it's the learning statement that the enemy comes to say, look, brother so-and-so did it. Sister so-and-so did it. Why can't you do it? You see, she did it. Nothing happened. He did it. 
Nothing happened. Why don't you also try to do it? Nothing will also happen to you. And then what happens? The very same ad has now gotten people right now supporting children they did not intend on having. So some people were led into doing what they did not intentionally want to do, all because they were enticed into doing something which was not their intentions on doing. So they were fooled into this art. They were fooled into the craft where the seducer has gotten them in a place where they really, where he really or she really wanted them to be in. And this is how a lot of people have ended up in sin today because our minds play games with us. When the devil whispers to us, kill yourself. You are not worthy. Don't you see you're not beautiful enough? Don't you see that nobody loves you? Don't you see that there is nobody that cares about you? Look at that rope. Take it. Hang yourself. And as a result, this is how majority of us commit suicide. This is how majority of us are led into depression, into a lot of heart problems because we are seduced into the art of the devil. Now, you want to understand this. What is seduction? How do we really get seduced? Yes. What happens in the seductive form right now? Yes. Yes. I hope you're getting me right now. Yes. So I hope you're now getting your pens ready right now. And if you are watching us from different places, make sure, tell somebody we are live. The prophet is dealing with a hot topic right now. Make sure, come in, come hear this message, come hear this. Stop whatever you are doing and come hear this one because it's going to be a great eye-opener for you. Now, what we have read, the Bible then says, the serpent was more subtle than any other beast that the Lord God created. And it starts by questioning Eve. Did the Lord God say you should not eat? And Eve gives her own understanding according to as she has heard, according to the instruction that came into her spirit that she has conceived and is busy walking into and walking by. And she goes like, no, God said we should not eat, not even to touch. For in the day we shall do it, we shall die. And the serpent says, no, 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 you shall not surely die. But the Lord see that you shall be like him, knowing both good and evil. And the Bible then puts it like this when you go further with the scripture. It says, and when the woman saw the fruit. In fact, let's just go there. Let's just go there. Let's just, let's just go there so you can understand this. For those that are joining us, we are at Genesis chapter number 3. Chapter number 3. Verse number 6. This is where we are now reading from right now. Can you please read for me? Verse number 6. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food. And when the woman saw. Ah, I don't know if you are getting this. I don't, I don't know. Oh, yes, I don't know if you are getting this. Oh, yes. Are, are you guys getting this? We're getting it. It says, and when the woman saw, she was already ahead. Re re remember this, before we had uh, televisions, the first thing that was there was the radio. And you understand this with me, that audio birth is visual. When you're in your mother's womb, your eyes are shut for the period of nine months. Before you are conceived, before you come out of your mother's womb, your eyes are closed. And that closing of the eyes, your ears are open to hear the sound, everything. But guess what? You still sleep in your mother's womb. And as a soul, you dream in your mother's womb. But the question is this, what do you dream yet your eyes have never opened? That simply means this, that audio creates visual. What you see is a byproduct of what you've heard. Is like saying this, if, it is, if, if, if indeed what you see gives birth to what you, if, what is birthed by what you've had, then we can also formulate it like this. If it was not true, then that simply means this, that blind people don't dream because they have never seen anything in their lives. But for them to dream and actually say, I had a dream and I saw this. Listen, they never said I had a dream and I had <laughs> so that you can understand this, let's go. Maybe somebody may say, Prophet, I think you are lying to us. Let's go to the book of Job, chapter number 33. Job 33. The book of Job, chapter number 33. If you are there, shout, I am there. I don't hear you guys. If you are there, shout, I am there. 
All right. If I, you're not there like me, just shout, wait for me. <laughs> All right. Job 33, from verse number 14. And I'll read it for the sake of time. It says, for God speaketh once, yet twice, yet men perceive it not in a dream. Listen, he never said God showeth. He says he speaketh. How does he speak? The Bible then says in a dream. Are you getting this? Yes. In a what? In a dream. In a dream. If, you're, if you're watching, this, just type right there on the comment section, just say, in a dream, in a dream, God is speaking to me. And may God speak to you tonight in that dream. And may he show you deep things that you never thought you would know. May he reveal to you deep secrets of the spirit that you never thought were there and that you never thought were existed. Now watch this. For God speaketh once, yet twice, yet men perceive it not. In a dream, in a vision of the night, when deep sleep falleth upon men, in slumbering upon beds, then he opens. I hope you got that part. Then he opens their ears. Did the Bible say he opens their eyes? It says he opens their, their ears, correct. Then he opens their ears. Hmm. And sealeth their instruction. So whatever you are dreaming, it's because God has whispered it to you. I hope you're not getting this part. I remember going to watch a certain movie with some of my sons. It was called uh, The BFG, The Big Friendly Giant. And uh, in The Big Friendly Giant, the Big Friendly Giant was able to speak dreams into the hearts of the giants. And the giants would dream things. Even the children would dream things. And when they would dream all these things, it was because the giant would come and whisper to the ears. And whatever they would whisper is what they actually would see in the dream. Actually what they would dream about. Now, it simply means this, that if I can say something, you can see it. Have you realized that you actually were very much in love? You were so much in love. Butterfly feelings everywhere. There was no person under the universe that could take you out of love until that third party came and told you what your partner was doing. And immediately you saw. I don't know if I'm talking to somebody. Maybe, maybe, maybe somebody in the United States can hear me right now. I think somebody in Barbados, somebody in St. Lucia, somebody in St. Mantis is actually hearing me better. It is actually what you had, the rumor that you had that when you looked at this particular individual, you started changing your perspective about that person. Am I talking to somebody? Right now we've got people all over the world who have had this about that man of God, this about that man of God, this about that man of God. It is actually what you had that has changed your perspective on that man. You love that man of God. You used to watch him day and night, but until you heard a particular rumor, it made you look at that man of God with the eyes of him being an evil person when he was always good in your eyes. So which means what you have heard has changed the narration of who he now becomes in your life. So hearing is seeing. I hope I'm talking to somebody. Hearing is what? The Bible says when you, shall, when you do not know which way to go, you shall hear a voice from behind saying, this is the way, walk ye in it. Yeah. In other words, it is the words you hear that give you an epicalypsis, that open your eyes, that give you a revelation and an eye opening to see where you are actually supposed to go. Am I talking to somebody so far? So this is what the Bible says in the book of uh, Genesis chapter number 6. It says, and when the woman saw, she has heard now, the trees in between her eyes. The tree is just in front of her. She has now heard the enemy. She has heard the serpent telling her about the questions. That this is what you should question. No, this is not how it is. God sees that you shall be like him. Now the woman now starts to see with the eyes of a seducer. Starts to see. Is now in the trap of a seducer. She has fallen into the trap. She has now been enticed into the seducer's trap. She has fallen victim. To what the seducer wants to achieve. And isn't this the very same thing that majority of us right now are listening to me? Majority of you, you are fallen trap to the seducer. That boy came to you, promised you heaven and earth. 
but his main goal was to get you to sleep with him on bed. And finally, when he has said, just you put all the words, my dear, you know the way you look like. You are better than the seven wonders of the world. I think you should be the eighth wonder now. <laughs> they should put you right there. And you fell in love. You looked at the great pyramids of Gaza. You're like, I'm more beautiful than them. You looked at the Victoria Falls and said, I'm more splendorous than it. And when the boy slept with you, all of a sudden he's not responding to your text messages. You call, he's not responding. You're like, what's wrong with you? And then he says, you are so ugly. But he used to tell you about the seven wonder. Why? After the seducer has achieved the main goal, he dumps you like he never said a thing to you. I want you to understand this. It is always the trick of the enemy. The enemy never loves anything you do. The enemy does not care with everything you do. All he cares about is when you sell your soul directly to him and he has achieved your soul in his arms. And the by consequences afterwards, he does not care what happens to you because his main aim is to get you into a hellfire, is to seduce you and entice you into a hellfire. Please continue reading for me. Just continue reading for me so that we can get to understand where we are and how does this art of seduction really work and the types of seducers which are out there. Please read for me so you can understand this. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for and food. And when the woman saw, remember she has had now. Now she has been seeing the very same tree for years in that garden. And she never had a thought. But now after the serpent said whatever he said. Now she sees the tree in a different perspective that she has ever seen the tree before. Now when the woman saw, all right, let's go on. And that it was pleasant to the eyes. That it was pleasant. Oh, I don't know if I'm talking to somebody. So all these years that this woman is waking up and sees the tree, it was not pleasant until statements were uttered. I don't know if I'm talking to somebody. Yes. He used to go with that girl to school, walk with that sister to church, walk that brother to, to work, until somebody opened your eyes to that brother. He says, did you see his eyebrows? Oh my God, did you see his chest? Have you seen his walk? The way he walks. Oh God. He just says, come here. Get over here. And immediately you looked at this brother with eyes of wantom. You looked at the sister with eyes of wantom. Now it was no longer the same sister that you saw. You now saw a potential sex partner. Why? Because somebody opened your eyes to something you never thought. I don't know if I'm talking to somebody so far. Am I talking to you? Uh, now, go, go, go on with me. Let's, let's go. And the tree to be desired to when make the woman one wise. Saw the tree to be desirable. Uh -huh. She took of the fruit thereof. Now she's doing an action. And she has now fallen into the trap. She took the fruit thereof. Uh -huh. And did eat. And ate. With everything that was there, Adam did not find any form of attraction. With any, everything that was in the garden, Adam was not enticed by them. Yeah. Are you not getting this? Okay, let's go on. Verse number 21. And the Lord God caused a deep sleep and to fall upon Adam. And the Lord God Adam caused a deep sleep to fall, to fall upon, upon Adam. Adam. And he slept. Uh -huh. And he took one of his ribs. And he took one of his ribs. And closed up the flesh. And closed up the flesh. Instead thereof. Uh huh. And the rib which the Lord God had and taken from man. And the rib which the Lord God had taken from man. Made he a woman. Made he a woman. And brought her unto the man. And brought her unto the man. Now watch this. So God did not just uh, just uh, bring something and just brought it just like that. God crafted a woman. Brought it to Adam in a way that Adam would be enticed. I don't know if I'm talking to somebody so far. So he creates this woman. Creates the breast of the woman. The calves of the woman. The stature of the woman. So that whenever this woman is presented before Adam, his reaction will not be the same reaction as he saw the animals and did not move an inch. So God brings the woman to him. Right? Now watch this. Watch this. Let's, let's go now. Let's go, continue. And Adam said, And Adam said, This is now bone of oh my, my bones. Goodness. <laughs> no, 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 you don't, you don't get this part. You don't. Wait, wait, is it in your Bible? Yes. Is it in your Bible? Yes. Are you sure it's in your Bible? 
What, what does your Bible say? Read it again. This is now bone of my bones. Oh my goodness. This is now, after seeing the animals, after seeing the pig, the chimpanzee, the giraffe, the hippopotamus, he said, no, 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 they don't move me. I have no sexual attraction whatsoever. I don't have a, a, a thing that I can go to the pig and say, be my wife. Nothing whatsoever. <laughs> but here is Huchi Mama standing before him. Evie, yeah. Evie. She gets there. No name given to her whatsoever. And Adam says, mm, 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 mm. Bone of my bone. Oh, Lord. Flesh of my Flesh. Mama Sita. <laughs> you shall be called Eve. He, wait, 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 wait. The animals were given to him. No, no, you don't understand this. Now, read, read verse number 20 again. Verse number 20 of the very same chapter. And Adam gave names to all the cattle uh -huh. and to the fowl of the air. In fact, go, 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 go uh, verse, uh, verse number 19. And out of the ground, mm -hmm. the Lord God formed every and beast of the And out of the, the ground, field. the Lord God formed every? Beast of the field. Uh -huh. And every fowl of the air. Uh -huh. And brought them unto Adam. And brought them, presented them to Adam. Adam, he is a wife. Huh? Adam, he is a wife. Choose from the chimpanzee, from the giraffe, from the zebras, from the buffaloes. Choose. And Adam just gave them names. I know buffalo, zebra, giraffe. But Adam is still lonely. Yeah. And God says, it is not good for a man to be alone. I will make him a suitable help met for him. And God caused this man to fall into a deep sleep. And when this man falls into a deep sleep, what happens? The Lord takes from his rib and forms a woman and seals it up with the flesh. He decided, you know what? If I use the very same tactic, this man will not be enticed. If I use the ground that the animals came from, this man will not be enticed. Let me use something that when he looks, he will say, Mama Sita, Mama Mia, Kraktos Kolovrosia. Something that will make this guy speak in tongues. And what did God do? God formed a woman and presented him to Adam. The same way that God formed the beasts from the kettles, from everything, and presented them to Adam. But Adam only gave names, but never said nothing. But when Adam looks at Eve, he says, this is now bone of my bone, flesh of my flesh. She shall be called what? She shall be called a woman. Watch, watch this, we're not done. Let's go on, uh-huh. Verse number 24, verse number 23, uh-huh, let's go. And Adam said, uh -huh. this is now bone of my bones. This is now bone of my bone. Uh -huh. And flesh of my flesh. And flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman. She shall be called woman. Beca Why? Because she was taken out of man. Because she was taken out of a man. Now watch this. Let's go. Verse number 24. Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother and shall cleave unto his wife and they shall be one flesh. Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother and shall cleave unto his wife, and they shall be one flesh. Now watch this. Adam looks at Eve, and this is what happens next. Verse number 25. And they were both naked. Oh, oh. And they were both naked. The man and his wife. The man and his wife. And were not ashamed. Hmm. Both of them were naked. And I'm not ashamed. I don't know if I'm talking to somebody. Oh, yes, imagine. Both of them are naked. And I'm not what? Ashamed. I'm not ashamed. Yes. It, it tells us here that they were naked. Yes. And not ashamed. In other words, the very same word naked, that does not mean that they were just naked. Looked as, oh, there's nothing. No. It simply means, and the man and his wife had intimacy and did not feel no shame. The question is, who taught Adam how to have intimacy? That's a tricky one. Who came down? Which angel said, Adam, this is how you use that love portion that's inside of you. And it, this is how you stir up that well that's within you. So that the well of Jacob can be fetched. 
and water can be taken out. Who taught Adam that? Nobody. Why? Out of seduction led them, enticed them, and the two are one. Every single time he wakes up, he sees this witchy mama's like, mm, 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 mm. my God, my God, you are bone of my bone, flesh of my flesh. He just feels like holding her. He just feels like kissing her. He just feels like she should be around. Go with me to the book of Songs of Solomon. Maybe you'll understand this better. Songs of Solomon, chapter number eight. <laughs> are you still here? Yes, Carla Brongle is so brotaskiva. Car all a savre, de la grand sofre de la hitoskevia. Songs of Solomon, chapter number eight. Mm. Are you there? Yes, yes, me. Are you there? Oh, yes, yes me. Please read for me from verse number one. We, we, we're going to deal with this. Oh, that thou wert as my brother. Oh, I wish you were like my brother. This is a woman. Uh huh. That sucked the breasts that of my mother. That sucked the breast of my mother. When I should find thee without. When I should find thee without. I would kiss thee. When I would find you outside, I would actually kiss you. Yeah, I should not be despised. Hey. I would lead thee mm -hmm. and bring thee into my mother's house. I would lead you and bring into my mother's house. Who would instruct me? Who would instruct me? I would cause thee to drink of spiced wine of the juice of my pomegranates. Hey! I would cause you to drink the spiced wine of my juicy pomegranates. His <laughs> uh, she is not talking about the pomegranates, you know. He says, of my. All right, let, let, let's go on now. His left hand should be under my head. His left hand should be under my what? Head. Already she's showing how she can entice this one. <laughs> uh huh. And his right hand should embrace me. And his right hand should what? So what she's trying to say is that the left hand is under my head. She's right here. And the right hand is doing what? Embraces her. Already that's the new word called cuddling. Now let's go. If somebody says cuddling is not in the Bible, there it is. <laughs> Let's go, sir. I charge you. Wait. O, o I daughters, charge you. Oh, daughters of Jerusalem. This is the man now. After hearing that word, he says, hey, something in me is being arised. I charge you, O oh, daughter of Jerusalem. Uh -huh. That you stare not up. Hey, don't stare up, love. Don't titivate certain things. Uh huh. Nor awake my love. Nor awake my please. love. Until he pleased. All right. So viewer discretion advised. <laughs> that you awake not my love until it's until it's pleased. <laughs> Who is this that cometh up from the wilderness? Who is this that cometh up from the wilderness? Leaning upon her Leaning beloved. Leaning upon her beloved. I raised thee up under the apple tree. Ah. Let's leave that part. I raised thee up under the apple tree. So one thing you need to understand, seduction has always been there. The one that really made seduction was God himself, the art of looking into somebody and you fall in love instantly. It was God the author of it. Remember, the devil is not the author of anything. The devil takes what God created and corrupts it. Am I talking to somebody? Yes. He takes what's already there and he corrupts it. Now, we have this that people need to understand. When it comes to seduction, it is how the enemy uses this tool to get many people into sin and many people falling from the grace and from the call of God. We have a lot of people today we have been seduced by the enemy. A lot of people today were have fallen victim of the enemy. Now let me show you one, one thing. We've got different types of seducers, right? The first kind of seducers are what we call the sirens. Now the sirens are the women. These are normally the women. The sirens are women who have a high sexual aura. In other words, they are attractive.
The moment you look at them, just something just tells you, I need to sleep with this one. I just need to get in bed with this one, no matter what. She does not need to say nothing to you. Now, a siren is in her own way, way powerful than any other thing. And the opposite of a siren is called a rake. Now, the rake is the male counterfeit. So the male part is called the rake. When a woman looks at this man and only sees a sexual partner, where you desire this man sexually. So both the siren and the rake are in the same category. I hope I'm talking to somebody. Yes, ma'am. For example, you have a woman in the Bible by the name of Delilah. Delilah was a part of a siren, or rather, rather a woman who was a siren. You have a woman as well in the Bible, and I'm going to explain this as we, as we go further. Delilah knew how to catch Samson's attention. Yeah. 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 Delilah knew how to lure Samson into what she wanted. She had a very seductive kind of a spirit that was able to lead this man and make him forget who he was. Everybody's asking, Samson, where is the strength of your power? I mean, if you are looking at Samson, he, he looked way skinnier than me. And if, you, 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 if, if indeed Samson was actually more powerful, there was no need to ask, where is your power coming from? Because you can see the bulginess of his muscles. You can see how built his chest is, how the definition of his biceps and his triceps are coming up. So there was no need to ask, where is your power coming from? Because if it was coming from the muscles, therefore they're already there. But this man is too skinny that everybody is shocked, perplexed at the way that this guy handles gates at ease. And the way this guy just picks up heavy objects that men of high value and men of high stature, highly men trained in their muscles, muscle builders, can't even pick up the weights that Samson is picking up. And Delilah comes, puts the men on the thighs, knows how to brush him nicely, give him a nice massage, and says, baby, Please tell me, where is your power? The first time this man refuses to be seduced, lies. But the second time she really got him where she wanted, puts him on the lap. After feeling the heat of the lap, the man sleeps. He says, where is your power? He says, my power. From the day I was born, my hair has never been cut. If you cut my hair, my whole power will cease. And she calls the Philistines. She said, this man's power is on the hair. I will cut nicely his dreadlocks. And then afterwards, I will call you. And then after cutting the dreadlocks, she says, My, Samson, arise. Arise, the Philistines. And Samson realizes the power is gone. Because he was seduced in the art of a siren seducer. Who just by looking at this woman, there's just an aura of being enticed sexually. That's what happened to Samson. Now you've got also what we call the rakes. The rakes are, you know, people like uh, Solomon. Solomon by himself, how does he manage to have a thousand women, 500 concubines around him? Okay. I mean, he can finish the whole calendar two years or even three years. 365 divided by 1,000, you still have surpluses. That means in a year, this man can't even finish all the women. But he has married them by his wife. Imagine a 1,000 women. You still need to get some small houses somewhere. Concubines, you are not satisfied. Because his wisdom was already alluring enough. Now, that's what we call the rakes. Now, the second kind are what we call the stars. The stars are those which we today in the modern world would call the charmers, where the way they dress, the way they walk, the way they smile, the way they talk, the way they present themselves. You just are charmed. You are taken into this art. Delilah, I mean, uh, this woman, Jezebel, was one of the stars. When you look at her, the way she put makeup on her body, it will cause you to lose yourself. Remember the Bible says when Jehu came, 
she went into her bedroom and made up her eyes because she knew how her eyes would do wonders. Maybe you don't understand. Go back to Songs of Solomon, chapter number one. Let me show you this. Songs of Solomon, chapter number one. All right, look at this verse number one. It says, uh, in fact, verse number two. Let him kiss me with the kisses of his mouth, for thy love is better than wine, because of the sever of thy good ointment. Thy name is an ointment poured forth, therefore do the virgins love thee. Draw me, we will run after thee. The king has brought me into his chamber. He will be glad and rejoice in thee. We will remember thy love more than wine. The upright love thee. And then Solomon responds. Listen to what he says. He says, I am black but comely, O ye daughters of Jerusalem, as the tents of Kedah, as the curtains of Solomon. Look not upon me because I am black. Because the sun has looked upon me. My mother's children were angry with me. They made me the keeper of the vineyard. But mine own vineyard I have not kept. Tell thou whom my soul loveth. All right, we can actually stop there. It is just to show you the first part of the very uh, songs of Solomon, who Solomon is the author, tells you how much Solomon was just a charmer by profession. You'd look at this guy, and this guy would just naturally charm you. So these are the kinds of seducers we have. The charmer is the one who naturally dresses with an appeasing form of dressing. They just dress knowing very well when they get on the mirror, when they put this, is to make sure that they lay you into a particular place that they want you to be in. Now the second kind, after the charmer, uh, you've got the cuckets. Now, the cuckets are those who, uh, what we call, stop it, I want it. Where they actually want you, but at the time they draw away from you. They show you that they really want you. Then the next thing, they give an attitude like they don't want you. They confuse you a little bit. They cause you to be hot. The next thing, they pour you with cold water. And you don't understand what's, what's really happening is what we call the dominant side of the, or, and if they are women, they are actually more dangerous because she smiles at you and then you think she likes me. Then you go there and she like disgusted about you. And you wonder, I don't know whether she wants me or she hates me. I don't, I don't know if I'm talking to somebody. This is the very same art that the enemy uses. And this is how majority of people we are seduced into all these things. Now go with me to the book of uh, 1 Timothy, chapter number 4. 1 Timothy, chapter number 4. And I want you to show you this, that in the art of seduction, this is how the enemy is winning over the church today. And the question is this, how does he win? We're about to get there now, you'll understand it better. Let's go. 1 Timothy, chapter number 4, verse number 1, please read for me. Now the Spirit speaks expressly. These are the latter times. Some shall depart from the faith. In other words, some will lose their faith. Some will fall away. There shall be a great falling away. Uh-huh. Giving heed. In other words, hearing. And taking hearing. And taking information. And taking instruction from what? Seducing spirits. Taking heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. The Bible then says, some shall depart from the faith. They shall be a fall away. Now the Spirit speaks expressly that in the latter time, some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits. In other words, majority of the people that we have today are going to be seduced. And how they're going to be the seduced is very, very simple. We are going to listen to worldly music. 
wear attires that are seducing. And what's going to happen? Majority of people, because of this, will fall away, will follow seducively, will be seduced. Am I talking to somebody? Now, how does seduction work? We are about to finish, and I want you to get this part. Right here, I've got a beautiful present. Very, very beautiful present. My goodness. So beautiful. If you can actually look at it. Very, very beautiful present. Somebody thought of me very, very well. And I'm looking at the present. It's actually very enticing to the eyes. Such a small thing, but I believe whatever is inside is actually worth it. So seduction is like this present. You don't see what's within, but you are taken by what's without. Yeah. Nicely decorated. The same way we've got adverts, advertising alcohol, advertising cars, but nobody tells you the cost of the car. Yeah. As they're advertising the car, they don't advertise the cost of the car. Yeah. And as they're advertising the cost of the car, they're what we call hidden costs that they don't tell you about. Additional costs that you're not told about because you don't advertise what's within, you advertise what's without. Now, I am enticed by this present so far. It looks, it looks amazing, it looks so good, and I, I just wanna open it up. And breaking it open, the first layer is broken. I'm seeing my ribbon nice. I just wanna take the ribbon out. The ribbon is nicely taken out. Now already, I am starting to be curious of what's inside. And then you break it nicely, open it nicely, because you actually want to get to understand what is so nicely decorated. The breaking part even adds more curiosity. I can see there's still another package, package nicely so. Oh my goodness. I break it, oh wow. It's a box. And the box is a what? Allergex, it's medicine. But guess what? When you break open, inside is nothing but trash. Oh my goodness. But unfortunately, you've already broken it up and you've already taken trash upon you. You were seduced nicely by what was outside. You thought it was good. That's what the Bible says, there is a way unto man that seemeth good, but the end of it leads to destruction. The enemy has decorated the ways of death to look like they're the best. And we've got people falling away into this prison that has been nicely decorated, but the enemy never advertises what's within. The enemy never tells you what is within because he knows once you find out what's within, you will actually go back. I don't know if I'm talking to somebody. Oh, yes, me. This is what you need to always know. As you're listening to this right now, know the art that the enemy uses to seduce you. Because as long as you're in this earth, you will be tried in many ways. Your faith will be tried in different places. You'll be tried in how you speak. You'll be tried in your walk with God. You'll be tried in a lot of things, especially when you get into compromising situations. You'll be in a place where you feel like, God, it's too much. I just need to give in. And majority of the people, this way, we give in to the lures, to the temptations. We feel like it's too much. I can't handle it anymore. And we give in. And the moment you give in, this is where the enemy wants to catch you. And since the enemy normally catches you at that particular instant, I want you to understand this. There is still hope for you. Yeah. The Bible says, repent before it's too late. The word repent simply means to turn away, to face the opposite direction from where you were facing. Oh, yes. Repent away from that sin. You are listening to this, you may be seduced in one way or the other. You were born in a Christian family, raised in a Christian background. But because you were seduced by your friends who led you into alcohol, who led you into smoking, who led you into womanizing, who led you into, in, 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 into 
uh, warmongering and all kinds of things. And you can see right now, men of God, I think I am a mess. Let me tell you, there is still hope for the hopeless. Jesus came to die for you. His blood was shed on the cross to wash away all forms of sin. Stop condemning yourself. Stop looking down upon yourself. Stop thinking that you are worthless. Stop thinking you're just a piece of trash waiting to die. Stop thinking it's better for you to just end your life because there is nothing good that can come out of you. You hear me very well. That's the very same thing that they said to Jesus. Can anything good come out of Nazareth? But a Savior came out that saves me and you. And if you can believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, if you can accept him into your heart, turn away from your wicked ways, he is willing to pull you out of the snare of seduction, the snare that has caught your soul, the snare that has caught your uh, whole life, the snare that has caught everything about you. He is willing to pull you out, pluck you out of the deep muddy clay and plant your feet on the king's highway that you may sing and shout that for this reason Jesus came down and he lifted me up. Oh, yes. And if you're here right now and say, Prophet, I've heard you. Now I realize that many times the enemy seduced me. Seduced me with money. Seduced me with pride. The lust of the eyes. The pride of life. Seduced me with all different things and I fell into the trap of seduction. I fell really deep and I was seduced and I fell really deep. There is still hope for you. God can still pull you out. His mercies are new every morning. His grace is sufficient for you to pull you out of that particular deep dungeon that you're in. And I want you to pray with me right now. Just say, Lord Jesus, come into my heart. I accept you as my Lord and personal Savior. Forgive me of my sins. Cleanse me of my wrongs. Blot out all my transgression. Wash me thoroughly for my iniquities. I present myself your child. Use me as only as you can. As only as you can. You, Lord, know my rising up and my sitting down. You know my tomorrow and my yesterday. Therefore, Lord Jesus, like clay in a potter's hands, form me into a shape you want, a shape that will please you. Rewrite my name in the book of life. Forgive me of all my wrongs. Remove all my past records. My past, my past errors that have dented my name and were leading me astray into the path of hell. Lead me in the path of righteousness for your name's sake. In the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. amen. Hallelujah. You can pray that prayer. You are born again. You are washed by his blood. Do not go back to your old ways. Oh, yes. The Bible says, just like a parable that says, a pig that was washed returns back to the mud, and a dog back to the vomit. Do not fulfill that proverb of your life. Oh, yes. As you are washed by his blood, if you are made fresh today, don't go back to the mud. Don't go back to the same errors. Continue in the light. Walk in the light. Shine that light. Let your light shine. My name is Prophet Ethan Branson, and I will see you again on our next episode. God bless you, and shalom, shalom, shalom. God bless you.